All right, you guys, if you hear the rain, that's because I'm sitting in a car doing this voiceover in the rain. These are pictures of the quilt that goes with the card. If you don't know, every time I gift a quilt, it comes with a personalized card that matches. I hope that I've been clear about that in the past, and that's the quilt. And here's the card. Do you see the similarities? I hope so. Let's get into it. That's a pattern for something that's coming up. Um, this is how I keep my scraps. I have a couple of folders of different colors, and I just pulled out all the colors that I wanted to use. And then I pulled out my guillotine trimmer, and I wish I had one that was a little bit longer. I might have to look into that. I think this one goes all the way to 7 inches, and I'd like one that goes up to 12, but not bigger. So no rhyme or reason to the size. I just cut them all, just cut a bunch of slices out of the, the scrap cardstock I have. Now I'm using double-sided adhesive. I have a very large roll here that's about 6 inches, uh, 6 and a quarter inches or something like that. And I am just rolling it on the back of some 65-pound cardstock. I use 65 pound because I want to cut it with my Cricut and this double cardstock is already going to be thick enough and blah blah blah. So this is just 65 pound gray craft cardstock. Really wish I had more of this. I don't even know if they still have it in Michaels, but it's gray craft cardstock. I love this stuff. Now I'm just trimming down the, um, the sides so that I have a whole panel of just sticky stuff. And I burnished it down with my bone folder. And now I'm rolling back just a little bit of it. You can put these down any way you'd like to. I always like mine at a diagonal angle. You can put them down straight. You can put them down, you know, whatever. However you want to do it. But I chose at a diagonal angle. And now I'm just grabbing strips. No rhyme or reason. I'm just making them pretty. And then you go around and clean up the edges. Right there, I took the longest strips because I think I could still use them. But the rest of these are going in the trash can. So you just use your trimmer. I could use the guillotine for this too. Actually, the guillotine is not going to be able to do the sides of this panel because it's so long. And my guillotine is so short. But anyway, just trim it off. And now look at how pretty that panel is. I've done this before. I've done this a few times. And I think that I might even have another video showing me do this technique I don't know but yep I'm just sticking them down some of them are thicker than others it just gives it a pretty cool look you do the same thing in quilting with string quilts basically you just sew them down which is pretty cool and uh, same thing it's just a great way to use up your scraps same thing in quilting using up your scraps same way basically and then you just trim it down I'm just burnishing down the cardstock, making sure that it's stuck down pretty good. And here are some samples of ones that I've done in the past. I think I did a video on these, but I'm not 100% sure. Somebody tell me. Tell me if you've seen me make those, because I feel like you have. After I finished making my, um, I don't even know what we're going to call it, a strip, sticky strips? I don't know what we're going to call this. Scraps, strips, I don't know. After I finished doing it, I took it over to my Cricut. I laid it face down on a not so sticky mat. I forget the light grip mat. And I just grabbed some shapes of leaves and I had them cut it out. Your best bet is to at least use the 100 pound setting and make it cut two to three times and make sure that it's on the most pressure. I think that's the best way to get a cut that goes all the way through that's clean. Mine did not cut as clean as I wanted to. I sent it back through. I got lucky because it cut right in the exact same spot. And I still didn't get the greatest. So again, use your 100 pound setting and then do three, have it cut through two to three times and you should be good. Now, I wanted a 6x6 six six card. However, this craft card stock is not 12 inches so I had to settle on a five and a half by five and a half card and I really was settling because that is not what I had designed in Cricut like I've thought it through when I was the the flower was the size for a six by anyway five and a half by five and a half I have to live with it if you have a piece of 12 by 12 card stock go ahead and do six and a half by six and a half because I think it looks pretty bigger you guys saw me make this paper when I was playing with the backgrounds and I think it was my fairy backgrounds. Yep. You know what? I thought this looked like Tula Pink's fairy fabric. So I just use it. It looks a lot like some of the fabric that I used on this quilt to me anyway. 
So it all works out. I wish I had a little bird. And what else is on there? I think butterflies are on that fabric. I don't know. Maybe a little bird and little butterflies. But I didn't feel like trying to find it. So anyway, you're just going to have to be okay with the splatters. And so I cut this sheet down to five by five. No, I think I cut it down to five and a quarter by five and a quarter. Maybe. Either that or five by five. And then I just started rearranging all of the petals that have been cut out by my Cricut. And as you see, I spaced the petals all out um, because I wasn't sure which ones were going to get caught where. And it was fun because it's kind of like when you flip it over, you find out. And again, I put that face down on that mat. And now you see me cutting out the stem. I'm just freehanding it. I drew it. I cut it out. I erased it a little bit. And that was that. And that was my stem. And I'm happy because it's wonky and funky and whimsical. And you guys know I'm all here for all those things. And so now I'm just figuring out where I want to put it and where I want to put my leaves. And I actually did not end up putting any of these leaves where <laughs> you see me putting them. Then I thought about my sentiment. I just wanted a for you because I'm giving somebody a quilt. Or just for you. But I wanted it to be bold to stand up against all that chaos and that card. So I went through my letter it's to see if they had a bold for you. But of course not. Actually, I take that back. They did have a bold for you. They didn't have a just for you. They had a just for you in my clearly besotted stamp set. But I was like, that's kind of plain. It's not bold enough to like kick this card's butt. And there's one. That's bold and it's just the right size. I was also looking at the um, the other Hero Art stamp set that I had just used. You can see that to the left, but their sentiments were too dainty. I needed something bold. So then I was looking at the, um, the May May's crafts, but I ended up going with the bold for you from the letter it. Remember these stamps are very inexpensive. You can get them at Target, but that means the quality isn't the greatest. So make sure you're using your VersaFine Clear with these if possible because dye inks are just going to beat up on there if you don't put a lot of work into it and so I was like that for you is just so I don't know so I took the first part of the stamp set I was thinking about cutting it apart but I don't love to cut my stamps apart I'll do it every now and then but I don't love it but I figured I was able to just ink up the gift for I think it says a gift and then for you. So then I just wiped off the ink for the, on the for you of that one out of the May May Made It stamp set. And now it says a gift for you, which made me very happy. Now you guys know the insides of stamps um, of cards, you get what you get with me. Sometimes I'll put it on the left. Sometimes I'll put it sideways. I just don't like things that are traditional. And I don't go out of my way to make things that are weird. I just do what feels right at that moment. So I wanted to use this big old grateful because I am grateful for this person. And I was trying to play with where I wanted to put it. And it turns out I wanted to put it right there. Why not? Right? It's my card. Do what I want to do. So I had to scooch that card over just a little bit so the grateful wasn't running into the side. And so I scooched it over and put my magnets down in place. And again, I'm using my VersaFine Clear. But I decided that I wanted it to be purple. Why not? Who says the inside has to be all black and formal? Not I. Big old grateful. I really like this. I like these fonts. I like the letter it's um, line. I don't actually use it, what it for what it was intended for, but I get use out of him. And then I put the for you on the inside too, right? That makes it cohesive <laughs> in my mind. So for the envelope, I don't have very many paper packs. I gave them all away. And now I kind of wish I hadn't because I'm constantly looking for paper. But I do have this confetti stack that I got from Hobby Lobby, which I like a lot. Lots of polka dots and stripes. So, of course, I would like it. I wish they were more jewel tone than they are. They're kind of like pastel-ish. Well, this one isn't, but anyway, um, I'm using my one, two, three punch. You guys know I love this sucker. Punch, pull, punch, pull. You've seen me do this a million times. I'm wondering if I'm going to just start cutting that part out of my videos. Nobody wants to watch me make envelopes. Or maybe you do. Who knows? So then we're going to just fold it over. Make sure you're using a Teflon bone folder. It makes a difference. They're expensive, but it makes a difference. Then we're going to measure and make sure that card fits in there nicely. And it does. And I love this paper. It's double-sided, so it looks like it's lined. 
and you know me every now and then I'll go back to my scraps and figure out how I can use them so I figured I would just cut off a strip and try to tie in this envelope I didn't feel like cutting any more leaves or flowers to make the envelope super duper match this is what I was feeling and I like to mix patterns so you might get a polka dot with a stripe with the plaid with me and who knows what else so I'm like ah uh, this still needs a little something so I thought I'd bust out my Concord and Ninth sophisticated script stamp set which I love you guys know my handwriting is trash so if I ever feel like really decorating an envelope I'll bust these out and stamp them they have a couple of different types of handwriting sets and I like this because they're made to all go together so I'm not gonna let you guys watch me do this just because I have to get on top of it in order and I you know play with it a little bit and all that kind of stuff but I drew a line very lightly using my T ruler so that I made sure to get it straight and there you go this is going to Maya who I love so much but you guys know that because I made her a whole friggin quilt the back of that quilt is amazing I darn near don't want to give this quilt up I love it so much it's called sweet and happy and she is the most sweet and happy person in the world so then I was like, this, it needed something. And I'm like, what does it need? I'm like, what if I put a line underneath? And so I grabbed my jelly rolls and it was going all good on that test sheet to the right. However, when I use this, it bled. And I was like, oh shoot, it bled. What am I going to do? What I ended up doing is grabbing a pigment pen, which didn't bleed and just thickened up those lines so that you could barely tell that it bled. I mean, you can still tell, but you know. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. This is handmade. Handmade, sometimes you're going to have some airs here and there. That doesn't take away from my love. So I thickened up the line and then through this line. And I felt good about it. I don't know why. This worked for me. It was just enough in my mind. So I cut it and I adhered it down to the bottom. And I thought it was so cute. I don't know why. I liked it. It might be a little busy for most, but, you know, when you come to this channel, expect the unexpected. Because weird stuff is going to happen. I'm going to put stuff in weird places. I'm going to have some weird color choices. You guys know. You guys know who you're messing with. And now, what I should have done was put a fifth wax bead in there. Why did I do it? I knew I was supposed to do it when I just haven't had very good luck on camera with my wax seals. Makes me sad. I'm gluing the card shut. And then I decided to use the rest of that. Uh, strip why not it's kind of funky it's all tied in why didn't I put a fifth bead when I did it I was like this is probably gonna need five of these little beads because the hexagon beads are smaller than the heart beads I order most of my beads from um, AMZ deco when I'm ordering my large seals and my seals are big guys I don't like little seals if you're gonna seal something seal that sucker like let me see it and this is my Disney seal, and I just, oh, I'm so annoyed. I know it, that doesn't even look like enough. It just didn't. And I wasn't paying attention, and it's slightly off-center. But again, you get what you get. You don't throw a fit, because this is kind of permanent. So, yeah. I could have poured wax on top of it and done it again, but who's got time for that? So, this is my card, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you later.